Hello everyone. Today I'll be showing you the add-ons I'm using, a quick how-to for installing add-ons, and then a brief explanation of what they do. You can find more information about the add-ons on their main pages at curseforge.com on the description tab of each add-on's webpage. Most of these add-ons will only be usable with the 1.14 client. If you are not using the 1.14 client, see the video here on how to install the client if you have not done so already. We'll begin with a quick tutorial on how to download and install add-ons. To download add-ons, go to the add-ons main page, click on Files, click on Filter by Game Versions, then select the desired build. Most add-ons I show you will be downloaded as 1.14.2 version, but keep in mind, you may need to download other versions to find one that works. Then click the name of the version, then download. Go to your World of Warcraft folder, underscore classic underscore era underscore interface add-ons. This is the folder we will be extracting all downloaded add-ons to by dragging and dropping the folder from the zip file into the add-ons folder. On your character, select screen on the bottom left, select add-ons, make sure load out of date add-ons is checked, and make sure the add-ons you want turned on are checked. Select OK and log in. The first add-on we'll start off with is Add-on Usage. This is a great tool for showing your active add-ons, as well as the amount of RAM and CPU usage the add-ons are using. Advanced Interface Options restores access to hidden interface options like the Add-ons tab. Accountant Classic is great for keeping track of how much gold you have been earning, spending, and showing you the ways it was used. Action Bar Plus is useful for adding more buttons wherever you like. This also gives you the ability to adjust their size. Atlas Loot Classic will show you what items are dropped in specific dungeons and raids, reputation rewards, PvP sets, and many other collections. Auto Dismount is useful for having your character automatically dismount in certain situations. Simple Raid Target Icons allows you to double-click on targets to bring up a radial menu so you can easily apply a raid target icon. Speedy Auto Loot makes looting quicker by skipping the loot window if you have Auto Loot enabled. Super Duper Macro allows you to create longer macros beyond the 250 character limit. Target Nameplate Indicator places a mark above your target's head when hovering or selecting them to make target selection easier. Tiny Pad is great for writing down notes and making a list of things to do. Titan Panel Classic allows you to add a toolbar that you can add your add-on buttons to so your mini-map doesn't get too cluttered. VoiceOver adds voice acting where there was none before. It is a thin sheen of protective magic that covers certain pieces of equipment. ZUI Emotes makes selecting emote commands easier. Bag Non combines all of your bags into a single frame. There is also a useful command for auto-sorting to organize the items, but sometimes it gets stuck in a loop requiring you to re-log so be careful about using this command during a dungeon or raid. Bag Brother allows the viewing of bank items across multiple characters on the same account from anywhere. Bartender is useful for arranging bars with just one click. Better Add-on List makes it easier to search for add-ons and enable or disable add-ons from the add-ons list depending on the character selected. Blizz Move allows moving of the locked Blizzard frames like the loot bag and character frames. Buff Owner is useful for seeing who buffed what, like Paladins doing blessings. Cast Cursor shows a circular casting bar around the mouse cursor. This is useful for timing heals and dispels. Deadly Boss Mods, or DBM for short, is necessary for the higher level difficulty raid bosses by keeping track of when and what attack they will use. Decursive gives you the ability to click to cleanse a target. Heal Bot gives you the ability to click to heal your target. Details shows numbers for damage and healing done during and after a fight. Doom Cooldown Pulse flashes the spell or ability in the middle of your screen when it is off cooldown. Dynamic Cam allows you to adjust the camera view depending on the situation. Enhanced World Map shows the zone levels as well as unhides undiscovered areas. Favorite Contacts makes it so you can easily choose the name of the characters you most send mail to at the mailbox. GatherMate 2 keeps track on your map of what and where you gathered it. Gear Quipper lets you set up gear sets as well as the action bar layout associated with each set. 
GTFO plays a sound when you're standing in an area of effect spell that is damaging you. Flight Timer Classic shows an estimated flight time in between flight paths. Battleground Spirit Releaser automatically releases spirit upon death in battlegrounds. Omnibar tracks enemy cooldowns in PvP. Capping keeps timers of battlegrounds, flags, and bases being captured. Honor Kills Counter keeps track of your estimated honor for the day, how many and what enemies you killed, and who will no longer give you honor for the day. Hunter Buddy shows a visual timer for your auto shot, as well as flashes your skills that are ready on your hotbar. Karthus's Hunter Timer shows a box with the timers of your used hunter skills and procs. Lose Control shows the skill used on your character that is causing you to not be able to control them. Loot Log shows all loot your character has picked up throughout the session. Minimap Tracking Menu allows you to right-click directly on your minimap and select what you want to track. Omni CC shows numbers on top of the skill, indicating when it will be ready for use and off cooldown. Party Bot Control Panel gives a visual command list to help summon and control AI party members. You can find a full explanation of where to get the add-on and how to use it here in my other video. Profession Link Database lets you link the materials to an item with just a few clicks. Questy allows you to track many different things on your world map, as well as your mini-map, like quest objectives, all class and profession trainers, mailboxes, repair locations, and many other things. Range Display shows the range between you and your target. Reputation Bar Colors gives better visual representation of what reputation level you're at with each faction. Restocker is extremely useful for restocking things like a specific number of reagents from the vendor. This is used in combination with ID tip to quickly find the items you want to buy. Add the item ID and the number you will always want in stock in your bags. And whenever you open the vendor, it will automatically buy up to that amount for the specific item. Select allows you to create macros as a drop-down menu to select different mounts, spells, and items. You can create this macro by typing forward slash select, and then add the items you want to select between, separating each item with a comma. Shadowed unit frames makes your player and party frames appear a little cleaner, as well as show a visual animated character frame. I like using these frames when in a party of five or less people, and the Spartan UI frames when in a raid. By selecting party, hide in any raid, these frames will disappear when in a raid. Spartan UI is the main UI that I use in combination with shadowed unit frames. This will require a bit more setup, as well as going over a UI breaking error that will need to be addressed. When you first enable the add-on, you will be met with a setup screen. Go through the settings, reading everything and enabling or disabling what you would like. I preferred the minimal UI look and kept everything else as default. Next go into the Spartan UI settings by typing forward slash Spartan UI. Before we begin editing the UI, it's important you understand how to back up your UI throughout the process in case an error occurs. At the very bottom select export. Close the main Spartan UI settings window and then click export on the bottom right. You will then see a long string of code, copy this and paste it into a notepad file, then save. Now we're ready to begin editing the UI. Go back in the main Spartan UI settings. In the general tab you'll see we can change things like the art style and font. Under the Bartender 4 tab, we can move and reset action bars as well as set up quick key bindings by clicking on key bindings hovering over the action bar skill and pressing a single button or combination of keys on the keyboard. Under artwork, I like to remove the red color and make it transparent by going to artwork, artwork options, click on artwork color, and then adjust the slider. You may need to reload your UI for changes to take effect. Under modules, you can change things like AFK effects, auto turn in for quests, buff locations, and mini-map settings. Make sure your UI is backed up and saved before starting to edit this next section. Under Unit Frames, we can change many things to do with our player and enemy frames, as well as the buff and debuff locations. When adjusting the buff and debuff locations, 
a UI breaking error can occur, requiring you to import your saved UI settings. Under the Movers tab, we can toggle movers to start moving our frames. We can also check this box to enable easier frame moving by just holding the Alt key and then dragging. Thank you everyone for watching, and I hope this gives you a little better understanding behind add-ons. There are many more add-ons available on CurseForge, and I would highly recommend checking them out. Until next time.